And once again, uh, this is something we're doing for this series. As you can see, there's a lot of pauses, those Selah moments. Pauses because if we turn on the news or read the paper, we are often being flooded with things that take away our peace, that take away our joy. And so in this ser series that leads to Lent, we are trying to put those moments into our worship so that more than ever they are needed. It is always good to have those moments of pause, but here even more so. It soothes our soul. We may not even know we need it, but as we do these actions and have these moments of quiet and prayer, they do soothe our soul. of Christ be with you. Will you make a gesture of extending your cupped hands towards others who may be with or near you as a sign of offering the peace that Christ gives? If you are alone, place your cupped hands over your heart as a sign that you send your heartfelt peace out to the world. Give thanks for strong yet tender hands held out in trust and blessing where words fall short let hands speak out the hearts of love express We come to our time of tithes and offerings. And obviously, we're not in the church passing a plate. And as I often say, there is much more that we're called to offer up than what we put into a plate. Uh, if you're online, if you go to our website, which I encourage everybody to do, uh, we have donate buttons on our website. And you can do that and set that up. Uh, and we're working on other ways to be able to do that. You, of course, can mail in your monetary contributions but there's also thinking about how to use the gifts God has given us. This week, uh, we ha had the opportunity that someone who was extremely gifted in music uh, came to our church, and uh, we set up a camera, and uh, she played on our piano, and there, we didn't have much practice. We couldn't even hear how it sounded. And we're going to play that song. Uh, Holly Phillips was here, and she was she's playing on our piano. You'll see that. But I just want to let you know that uh, at some points, maybe the piano is a little uh, loud and you may not be able to hear her. That was me. I put the camera on and we couldn't really hear. And it, it is what it is <laughs> in that aspect. But it, if you just no, don't worry about that and just let the music flow over you, oh, I'm sure it'll touch your soul. And it'll realize that we all have gifts that we can offer up, gifts that we can give. So let us focus on that as we listen to In Christ Alone. Thank you. 
continuing in Psalm 62. He alone is my rock and deliverance, my citadel high on a hill. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my significance depend ultimately on God. The core of my strength, my shelter, is in the true God. Have faith in him in all circumstances, dear people. Open up your heart to him. The true God shelters us in his name. Human beings disappear like a breath. Even people of rank live artificial lives. Their weight is that of a breath in a balance. Nothing. Added together, they're still lighter than air. Do not resort to oppression. Resist the temptation of ill-gotten gain. If you achieve wealth, don't let your heart get attached. The true God spoke this once, and twice I've heard, that you, the true God, hold all power. Your love never fails, O Lord, for you pay every person back according to their deeds. God's word for God's people. Praise be to God. As part of this sermon series, uh, we have a composer who writes songs, uh, and he, he actually is sharing about the song he wrote. This week it's called In God Alone, and so first he will share about what he was thinking as he wrote this psalm, and then we'll hear the song sung, and you can join along. Psalm 62, listen to this. Only in God does my soul find rest. My life comes from God. Only God is my rock and my life, my stronghold, and I will not be shaken. Whew, that's some confidence. This sounds like it comes from a songwriter that has lived a lot of life and wants to pass on some wisdom to us. And I think that's what it is. Psalm 62 goes on about how wisdom is not to be trusted in people War and violence are not to be trusted. Money is not to be trusted. Only, the psalmist says, can we really trust in God? And the psalmist, in her wisdom, invites us to think about that too. What does it look like to trust only God? Or maybe another way to say that is, what are the things that we do lean on that aren't really helpful in the long run? What politics or ego or ideas or beliefs or people are we dependent on that really won't help us in the end? We sing together, In God Alone. In God alone is my soul at rest. Be at rest, my soul.
The sermon series that we're in the midst of is God is Holding Your Life. And all of the weeks after that, we've lifted up points that are points that we know, but sometimes don't live out. They're points that are not deep theologically, but sometimes we forget about when we're living our lives. This has been a, a simple sermon series in the word I'm preaching because it's just reminding of, of these true statements and taking time to lift up why they are true so that maybe, maybe we can hold on to these truths and they would give us strength for our lives and for the week. The first week we talked about all lives are precious to God. All lives. Your life, my life, the high and exalted, the low, the saint, the sinner, all are precious in God's hands. And we talked about how that makes a difference. If we truly believe we're precious, then we'll treat others better. And especially if we know that God holds them as precious, no matter what they've done to us, no matter what they've done in the world, they're still precious in God's sight. And so we should treat ourselves as precious, but also all those around us. We talked about where can I go? We talked about the fact that there is nowhere you can go on the globe where you can flee God. That through, through ages and through time and, and biblical history, we see people trying to escape God, but they never can. And that's not to be done in a scary way or for, to, to give you fear, but to know that God is always there. And you cannot escape God. But remember, God loves you, and and God wants to be in relationship. So at any moment that you want to turn around and recognize that God is there, God is there by your side. And this week, we're looking at in God alone. Now, this is something I often preach about because I think it's hard sometimes for us to realize that what really matters most is God. Because, you see, Often, many of us are not blessed with the ability to hear an audible voice from God or to see God before us in ways that are the same as this pulpit or other things in our life. And so what happens is we often, we often put other things uh, before God, not realizing it. For we know that when we get a paycheck and we've got that money, that money will buy things that we need and sometimes things that we want. And so we start to put trust in the money because it's got a tangible benefit. But the truth is at any moment that can all be taken away. God is the only sustaining force, continuing force, ever-present force, eternal force, and the only thing that we can really trust in. And any time we put our trust in something else, it's going to fail us. I know recently I preached about this and I talked about, I kind of touched on our pets, our animals, and uh, I may not have said it the most eloquently, and some got really upset. That, and I was not saying that animals are not precious or not beloved or not amazing parts of the family. But at the same time, if what you rely on to bring you comfort and, the, and what you turn to first and foremost is your beloved pet, well, your beloved pet only has so many days also, and they will be gone. There's things that can happen to them that sometimes uh, make them change their personality. And at times they may actually bite the hand that feeds them. It happens. But God is eternal and God is always there. I can go through all the different things. and, And I believe that in this pandemic, I'm hoping that we've had a chance to step back and and taken time to realize what is truly important. Since our schedules and our lives have changed so fundamentally, I hope and pray that we've taken time to assess that we need to spend more time relying upon God. For some of us, especially those that are retired and have been blessed through the years to be able to to make a good living and to store stuff away, some of us, how we've 
receive joy is going on trips and vacations because we can, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's where we receive our most joy, if that's what we're putting our hope in to keep us entertained and happy, we're going to have a problem when airports shut down, when life comes to a halt, when we need to be quarantined in our homes. It's in those moments where we can sit there and we can complain about the situation we're in, or we can decide, wow, maybe I've been putting my value in the wrong places, spending my time and energy in the wrong places. It's at that moment where, where we have an opportunity to be to transform, to be changed, to come closer to God, to build up that relationship that maybe was lacking. And as I often say at Tom's Creek, we journey together. We journey together wherever we're at. And some of us, some of us may have just come to realize that while we, while we read our Bible and have our prayers and we come to church, that we really don't spend true, authentic time with God in relationship with God. Even after 70, 80 years, maybe, maybe this was a time to realize that it's time to take more steps on that journey. So it doesn't matter where we're at. We're on this journey together. We should appreciate each other where we're at, and then we could help and encourage each other. And as your pastor, I've continually said, I want to meet you wherever we at, you're at. We don't need to put on a false face. We don't need to pretend that we're holier or more devout than we are, because when we do that, when we do that, we're not fooling God, and we're losing an opportunity to grow in grace and in love. I believe this pandemic has offered us an opportunity to grow in our faith, to grow in our love, to grow in grace, given us time to reflect on what is truly valuable and to see that lots of the things that we put value on are fleeting, will go away, will die, will wither. And God alone is a, is a point that we should be able to hold dear as Christians and to realize that's where we need to put all of our faith, and all of our trust. And yes, we can have other things that help us throughout our days and our lives, but we should never raise them above the top spot of God in our lives. I believe some of the political discourse that we have in this nation is because exactly people doing that. A particular party or a particular leader is going to save the day, make things better, and yes, they may make things better, but they cannot fully save the day. They are not God. They cannot fix all the problems and the woes of this world. But if our trust is in God, when leaders come and go, our souls don't get as anxious. They don't get as worried and concerned because we realize that above any elected leader, God is still there. It's God alone that holds the power of the world in his hands. The same hands that are holding you. God believes you're precious. God is holding you. And we should trust that in God alone are we going to receive our peace, our strength, our hope, our grace, and our salvation. And so let us reflect this week on how, we, where, how and where we're putting God in our list. And if we realize it's not at the top, don't, don't beat yourself up. Just decide to take steps. Take steps towards making God alone, the one you trust and turn to. As part of this sermon series, I've been collecting testimonies of being held. Uh, it's an opportunity for people to share how they have felt love and support of others of God in this time of pandemic. Uh, this week, uh, I have song words, a poem written by Steve Myers. Uh, it's entitled, When the Gray Days Are Past. It is not the difficulties of life that I have to conquer, so much as my own selfishness. For yesterday is but a dream, and tomorrow is only a vision. I need to live my life today. 
I will have no fear. God's strength will be given to me. Breathe in the blessing of each new day. The new life can't be built in a day. Building a new life is a slow process. I will pray daily for faith. I want to be one with the divine spirit. I will set my deepest affections on things spiritual. I will try to be at one with God. In conclusion, I live by faith. I thank God for his mercy and love. I am yours, dear God. Change me. Amen. And so if you have a story of God, how God has held you, supported you, transformed you in the midst of this pandemic, please share them with me. Email me, call me, let me know uh, so that I might share that. Uh, I'm able to, to lift up the words from people in our congregation that maybe we haven't been able to see in a while, but we can still hear from them, receive wisdom from how God is in their lives, reminding us that God is in each of our lives, holding each of us. And for that, we give thanks and praise. Amen. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. Yes, God is holding your life. Oh, God is holding your life. couple of announcements. Uh, we have held off from having meetings uh, in order to protect people and knowing that we don't have the greatest internet in this area. A lot of churches have tried to do Zoom meetings and other meetings. Um, we've held off. And in that time, a lot of uh, our members, a lot of people in our community have uh, learned how to use their computers better, uh, gotten better internet access. Uh, Miss Kathy uh, ha, ha, and Olivia have done bingo on Zoom for us and held other meetings, and we've grown in our ability to be able to use technology. And so we are going to attempt uh, an administrative council meeting via Zoom. Um, it's this Tuesday at 7 p.m., and uh, we'll have our new chair and vice chair leading us as we start to make plans for the future, and we have exciting things that, uh, that I'll be sharing with you in the next couple of weeks and exciting plans for the future. Uh, we're going to be sending out once again uh, the Zoom information if you need it. If uh, there is a way to just call in and uh, you don't need to have a computer, you won't get to see everybody else, but you will be able to hear and we will be able to hear you. And so if you want that, reach out to me. I can give you that. If you uh, check on the, this week's bulletin, uh, it's on there. And if you haven't gotten a bulletin, that probably means you are not on our email list or you haven't joined our website. Uh, when you join our website, uh, you will get, when I blog each week, the newsletter, you will get that. And so join it. Join our website. It's, uh, you're not going to get a lot of junk mail from it, trust me. Uh, think about going there and joining it, and uh, that way you'll get all the information. And once you join the site, you're able to uh, have an electronic copy of our directory. And uh, Miss Judy has been keeping it up to date and uh, updates it often as people's addresses change and things change in people's lives. She's been putting a new copy up there so that when you go in, there's an up-to-date directory. Um, something that the pandemic has blessed us with because we've never had that before. We made the changes this year for a, a wonderful website and now ways for you to have an electronic directory, the newsletters there, the, the sermon when it's done, you'll, there's a shortened version of it that's on the website. Go there, check it out, uh, tomscreekumc.com. That's all the announcements I have this morning. So I ask wherever you are, uh, if you are able to rise up for our closing hymn, Rock of Ages. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water and the blood from thy riven 
side which flowed be a sin the double cure cleanse me from its guilt and power not the labor of my hands can fulfill the law's demands could my zeal no respite know could my tears forever flow all for sin could not atone thou must save and thou alone nothing in my hand i bring simply to thy cross i cling naked come to thee for dress helpless look to thee for grace while I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. Now go in the knowledge that God is holding your life, even as we hold each other. You are not alone. You are loved. Amen. Lift up your eyes, behold the hills, from where will help and rescue come. We call on one who made the earth, who blessed the stars, the moon and sun. God is holding your life. God is holding your life, God is holding your life, we believe. God is holding your life, yes, God is holding 